Hey, this is His Word Unveiled. We are diving into the Word of God and more of the story of Hezekiah. So we hit in our last video, in our last chapters that we read, talking about this good dude, King Hezekiah. And it's about time that someone was like, you know what? We're not doing this right. We're not doing this God's way. So love that we finally saw this, this king doing right in the sight of the Lord, according to all that his father David did. Of course, we knew that his real father was King Ahaz, who was super bad dude. But Hezekiah then doing right in the sight of the Lord, following after the example of King David. So good. So we are continuing in that story and talking more about Hezekiah. Let's go after it. Most important part is right now where we sit in the presence of the Lord. We meet with him. We let God speak to us. So let's do this. Our reading for today is going to be 2 Chronicles chapters 30 and 31. Then we will jump over to Psalms 48. So that's it. Go meet with the Lord. Let him speak. Let's let things, you know, happen in our lives. Let's be changed. Let's be different people when we are finished reading. Let's let God just have that much power, have that much reign in our lives, over our hearts and our minds right now for such a time as this as we read through these chapters. So 2 Chronicles chapter 30, 2 Chronicles chapter 31, and then Psalms 48. Go do your thing. I'm going to do mine in praying. And then when you're ready, as soon as you're finished, however long it takes, hit play. Join me. We'll go over this. We'll just give God all honor and glory and we're just gonna let him have his way. So let's do this. I'm so excited for you. I'm so excited for me. I'm so excited for what God is gonna teach us and show us and do in us. Yes, let's go after it. Let's go after the heart of God. So go do your reading, go sit with him, prepare your heart. I'm gonna pray, here we go. Lord, we are so grateful and so overwhelmed by your faithfulness, who you are, being a faithful, righteous God, just pursuing us, falling fresh upon us, God. We just pray that the heavens just open up and this newness just pours down. Lord, we invite you to come. We invite you to flood us out. So the only thing we see, the only thing we know, the only thing we hear is you and your voice and your power and your love and your faithfulness and your truth. Father, we invite you here. We ask for you to meet us here right now. Teach us, be our, our guide, be our wisdom, be our insight. We love you. We give this entire time to you. Be Lord over everything in this moment. In Jesus' name, amen. Second Chronicles chapter 30. Let's go at it. So continuing on into King Hezekiah. So we saw in 29 that he assembled the priests and said, consecrate yourselves. We're going to consecrate the house of the Lord. We saw all of this action taking place, just this beautiful time of getting together, of doing things right, of setting things in order, of getting all the service of the house of the Lord established once again. So good. So this carries us into chapter 30. Okay. Very first verse says, Now Hezekiah sent to all Israel and Judah and wrote letters also to Ephraim and Manasseh that they should come to the house of the Lord at Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover to the Lord God of Israel. So Hezekiah is saying, Okay, I'm going to send messengers out. I'm going to invite everyone around to come and celebrate the Passover of the Lord. We're going to make this a big deal because it should be a big deal because he's a big God. And his word and his commandments and his law, we need to take more seriously. So verse 5 says, So they established a decree to circulate a proclamation throughout all Israel from Beersheba even to Dan, that they should come to celebrate the Passover to the Lord God of Israel at Jerusalem, for they had not celebrated it in great numbers as it was prescribed. So this, up until this point, they have not celebrated the Passover together in a large group, as a large community, as a nation, coming together, gathering together, and doing these celebrations. It doesn't say that it hasn't been celebrated at all, just not celebrated in great numbers. So it was probably celebrated in the, you know, within the individual's home, in their family, things like that. But according, or, or um, you know, as a big group, as, as everyone together, this has not been done in years upon years. And King Hezekiah is looking at this like, what in the world? Why haven't we been doing this? This is what the Lord commanded us. This is what community is to be, is coming together and worshiping the Lord, celebrating, celebrating our God and all he's done and all he is, celebrating the Passover and remembering, remembering who he has always been to us. 
and for us. So verse six says, the couriers went throughout all Israel and Judah with the letters from the hand of the king and his princes, also according to the command of the king, saying, O sons of Israel, return to the Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, that he may return to those of you who escaped and are left from the hand of the kings of Assyria. So let's stop on that. This is getting sent. This message is getting sent by these couriers of the king and going out um, and commanding and saying, hey, come and celebrate the Passover. And this is going out to all. It says, O sons of Israel. So um, went throughout all of Israel and Judah. Now at this time, some of Israel has been taken captive. They are held captive in captivity in Assyria. So the kings of Israel came after Israel. We know clear back with King Ahaz that Ahaz reached out to the Assyrians for protection, relied on them for protection and deliverance instead of seeking out the Lord. And from that, the Lord appointed the Assyrians to rise up and to then deliver Ahaz at that time to deliver Judah from the hand of the king, the king of Israel and from the king of Aram at that time. So we saw the Assyrian army came and took, killed the king of, of Aram. And also then after some time from that, came after Israel, besieged Samaria, captured it, had it, and took um, Israel then captive. So they are in captivity. But some of those, not all of Israel, was captured. Some escaped. And we see right here that he may return to those of you who escaped and are left from the hand of the kings of Assyria. So those who were not held in captivity, that they are scattered throughout, that they had escaped, that there are groups of them all over the place um, in the land of Israel. So this message was to go out throughout all of Israel and Judah and to everyone who is not held in captivity. Every single person from Israel and Judah is to get this message and saying, come, let's gather, let's be together. This is a command set out that you should come and celebrate the Passover with us. Then part of this message was in verse seven. Do not be like your fathers and or your brothers who were unfaithful to the Lord God of their fathers so that he made them a horror as you see. Now do not stiffen your neck like your fathers, but yield to the Lord and enter a sanctuary which he has consecrated forever and serve the Lord your God that his burning anger may turn away from you. For if you return to the Lord, your brothers and your sons will find compassion before those who led them captive and will return to this land. For the Lord your God is gracious and compassionate and will not turn his face away from you if you return to him. So this message is saying, God is a righteous God and he is faithful. Let's not be like our fathers, the kings who were before me, who turned away from the Lord and look at their end. Look what happened. Look where it got us. Look what we were led into. It got us nothing but destruction and defeat. And we saw all of these things happening. Hezekiah is saying, we're doing this right. We're not going to be like them. We're setting a new standard. And that's going to be aligned with the law of the Lord, what he commanded. We are coming together. We're doing this thing right. And we are going to glorify God. And then just screaming the faithfulness of God, where he says, the Lord your God is gracious and compassionate and will not turn his face away from you if you return to him, the righteous God saying, look what our fathers did. Look what these kings did before and look at the consequence. Look at the result. Look how it ended up. But if we return to the Lord, if we humble ourselves, if we come together, if we celebrate him and seek him out and do this thing right, then he will return to us. He will be a faithful God to us. He will bring about blessings for us. He will build our nation up. He will be our God. So then we see the response of the people in verse 10. So the couriers passed from city to city through the country of Ephraim and Manasseh and as far as Zebulun, but they laughed them to scorn and mocked them. Verse 11, nevertheless, some men of Asher, Manasseh, and Zebulun humbled themselves and came to Jerusalem. This is it. Guys, when we're living for the Lord, we're going to have a lot of people mock us and scorn us. They're going to laugh at us. They're going to turn away from us. They're going to call us crazy. That's just going to happen because as we love the Lord, the world's going to hate us because they hate the Lord. They don't want anything to do with him. So why would they tolerate us? Guys, we have got to just be okay with that, with that kind of rejection, with those kind of attacks coming up against us. It says some laughed at them and mocked them. 
that they didn't receive it at all. They were like, whoa, what? that's crazy talk. That's crazy talk. All that celebrating the Passover, that was way back then. That was like, that was for their culture. That things are things have changed. Times have changed now. That's not that's not necessary now. That's not really what God expects from us now. That's really not going to bring about blessings doing that. That was way back then. Guys, can you hear that? That's the message that we hear in our world today. That people, oh, those miracles, that was for that time. That that's no, that's no. Th- that kind of stuff doesn't happen now. Those miracles of healing, those God being a mi- no. No, that was for then. I believe that he did it then, but that's just not going to fit into our culture now. That's just not what happened. A word given, this prophecy spoken, oh, that was back then. There were so many prophets then, but guys, we, no, the same God then is the same God now. He doesn't change. He doesn't diminish in power. He doesn't say, oh, times are different, so I'm going to be a little, you know, it's going to be a little, I'm not going to be, you know, God of miracles. Guys, same God then, same God now. But these people, thats they're like, no, we're laughing. That's crazy talk. You're being a little too radical. Guys, we're going to hear it. And we just need to be focused in on the Lord. We need to hear him. And we just need to keep rolling, moving forward, rolling along, moving forward in obedience and all God calls us to do. Because the very next verse says, nevertheless, some men humbled themselves and came to Jerusalem. Even if it was just one man humbling themselves and coming back, listening and saying, yeah, yeah, I see. This is this is authentic. This is real. There's something in this that's different. That's what it is. God wants that. He's not after a whole bunch of a whole bunch of people. It's not quantity, it's quality. God wants it real. He doesn't want a bunch of people saying, "Yay, God, we're for you. We're going to live for you." And the next day, it fades. He doesn't want us just being on fire. He doesn't want it this temporary and full of emotion and, hey, it feels good and, and we're doing great. And then the second that our circumstances go a little sour, the second that things happen, that we're, we're not pursuing God anymore. We're, we're getting off our rocker. We're getting worried. We're getting fearful. We're, we're acting in anger. We're acting out of our emotions. We're not trusting the Lord. We're not seeking him, but we were just there saying, go God. God's not into that. He's not about that. He wants the people gathering, even if it's just one person, even if it's just a few people. If they're going to be real, God says, yes, that's worth celebrating. That's worth getting excited for. Because what Jesus did, he found one soul. He would have found one soul worth all the pain that he went through. If only one person would have received him. If only one person would have said, I believe in you and I want you, Lord, over my life. Jesus, come into my life. Jesus would have died for that one person. If you were that person, if you were the only person that would have come to him, Jesus would have died for you. Jesus, he just wants it real. God just wants those with authentic surrender saying, I'm in this for life. I am in this until the day I die. I am in this believing this. If I believe this now, I'm going to believe it tomorrow and the next day. And I'm choosing to live in it. That's being real. It doesn't matter if there's a million other people supporting you and with you and like you and and doing the same things and pursuing God the way you are. It doesn't matter if you're the only one. If you're the only one, then go for it. Know that God is a righteous God and he sees you and he's going to bless you. And you move forward as lonely as you feel sometimes. You move forward in the truth that God will never leave you, that he will never forsake you, that he sees you and he is celebrating the fact that you are running after him that you, he is celebrating that you are pursuing him and wanting more of him. So yeah, we're going to have people laughing at us. We're going to have people not understanding us, but there are also going to be people who humble themselves, who choose to have their eyes open and to see the truth and to run after the Lord because we choose, because we're choosing to glorify the Lord and elevate him, lift him up instead of lift ourselves up. That's worth it. That's where it's at. And even if we don't see those people, By our being faithful and our connecting with the Lord and just being focused on loving Him and and it being real, that people will come. They see. People are drawn to what is real. So we just got to keep loving Jesus. We got to keep this thing real. We got to be consistent. We got to make this a daily pursuit. That's when things happen. That's when real powerful things happen. And that's what we're called to do and called to be and live in because God wants us free. And God wants as many people as, as will be authentic and be real to come. That everyone is invited. Everyone is invited to come into his blessings. To come into this celebration of life and freedom and victory. Okay, with that, some mocking and some humbling themselves and returning to the Lord. 
Verse 12 says, The hand of God was also on Judah to give them one heart, to do what the king and the princes commanded by the word of the Lord. So again, King Hezekiah, king of Judah, that God, it says the hand of God um, gave them one heart to do what the king and the princess commanded them as far as celebrating this Passover, doing things right, getting back to the beginning and what God commanded them to do. Okay, verse 13. Now many people were gathered at Jerusalem to celebrate the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Verse 14 says, They rose and removed the altars which were in Jerusalem. They also removed all the incense altars. So they're saying, yeah, we're here for a celebration, but we're also here to remove all of the evil, all of the wicked, everything that's kept us from doing this. Up until this point, we're removing it all. We're getting rid of it all. Okay, uh, we see in verse 18, this, this talk about some of them who came to celebrate. Um, it says many actually from Ephraim, Manasseh, Issachar, and Zebulun had not purified themselves. Yet they ate the Passover otherwise than prescribed. For Hezekiah prayed for them, saying, May the good Lord pardon everyone who prepares his heart to seek God, the Lord God of his fathers, though not according to the purification rules of the sanctuary. And in verse 20 it says, So the Lord heard Hezekiah and healed the people. God is not after perfection. He laid out the commands of these rules. Hezekiah prayed and saying, Look, all these people, they're coming. They're not perfect. They may not understand what to do. They may not be you know, a, a part of this and familiar with this, but they're here to worship you. They're here to praise you. They're here to celebrate this feast and lift you up. And Hezekiah prayed for them. And I love how God saw that. He's saying, I see your heart. I see that they're here. I see what they're after. And I'm going to teach them. And I'm going to walk through this with them. And verse 20, love that. So the Lord heard Hezekiah and healed the people. Verse 21, the sons of Israel present in Jerusalem celebrated the feast of unleavened bread for seven days with great joy. Then in verse 22, then Hezekiah spoke encouragingly. Guys, this is a big deal. So much is going on. You've got people praising. You've got people eating and feasting and dancing. There's encouragement. Um, up in verses 15 through 18, we see the actual Passover. It was happening. They slaughtered the Passover lambs. They're just hooping and hollering and giving God glory and all the praise that he deserves. And in this, it says in verse 23, then the whole assembly decided to celebrate the feast another seven days. So they celebrated the seven days with joy. They were overwhelmed. They were moved. They wanted to linger. They didn't want it to end. So they kept celebrating. They kept praising. They kept glorifying and all in joy saying, we don't have to be here, but this is a good feeling. And it's not just feelings, but after so long of, of this, um, of the Lord just being not lifted up, not celebrated, not gone after, especially as a group. Guys, there is something real in that when we can come together and we can be for real and we can get a little radical and we can get a little Jesus crazy about how good he is. It's the times are gone where we, we're, we're, we're just, we stuff it down and, and we're so serious and we're like, Oh God, we got to be prim and proper around you. God just wants this release of freedom. He wants us to be able to express ourselves just fully all out, God, you are good. Doesn't matter how silly I look. Doesn't matter how ugly of a crier I am when I just weep and I'm overwhelmed and moved by his spirit, by who he is. Guys, just let loose. He wants this freedom and expression and expressing ourselves to him and praising him. And if it needs to go another seven days, then make it go another seven days. Continue that celebrating him and lifting him up. Verse 26 um, then says, so there was great joy in Jerusalem. Because there was nothing like this in Jerusalem since the days of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel. Then the Levitical priests arose and blessed the people, and their voice was heard, and their prayer came to his holy dwelling place to heaven. So amazing. Like we said, this had not taken place since King Solomon. And now all of a sudden we have King Hezekiah listening to the Lord, pursuing him, pursuing him and saying, we're going to make this happen. We are bringing this back. We are giving God his recognition. We are giving him his place here among the people where he intended to be, where he purposed to be for this, for this right now, what's happening for this to be so good. Okay. Moving on to chapter 31. Now, when all this was finished, all Israel who were present went out to the cities of Judah, broke the pillars in pieces, cut down the ashram and pulled down the high places and the altars throughout all Judah and Benjamin, as well as any frame in Manasseh until they had destroyed them all. 
Then all the sons of Israel returned to their cities, each to his possession. Love this, this huge celebration. And then again, let's go out. Let's take everything down. Let's destroy everything that stood in our way of receiving blessings like this, of having this joy and, and being able to be free to celebrate and to praise God like this. Let's remove it all. Let's get rid of it all. Not let even a little bit of residue last. I love this. It says until they had destroyed them all, until everything was removed, everything was taken out everything was destroyed. Love that. Love that dedication. Love that we are all in and we are trusting God with all that we are, believing that he is a righteous God, believing what takes place when we do get rid of all of this. It tries to hold us back, that, that tries to ensnare us, that will ensnare us if we, if we give ourselves to it, if we expose ourselves to it. They're saying, uh-uh, not today. These are new times. This is a new king. This is new leadership. We have a new heart, a new mind. This is a new celebration. It's on. Here we go. Getting rid of everything that stands in their way. Okay. Then we see in verse 2 and 3 this um, that King Hezekiah is appointing the priests by their divisions. Everything just set up in this order. We keep seeing things at the end of verse 3 as it is written in the law of the Lord. Um, then we read about tithes and, and bringing in... Um, the, the ties that the, what was intended to be to the priests and the Levites so that they can do the service of the house of the Lord, bringing in what the Lord has commanded. Verse eight says, when Hezekiah and the rulers came and saw the heaps, they blessed the Lord and his people Israel, that all this was coming in. Everyone was in it. Everyone was seeing the blessings of this and, and choosing to just praise the Lord and follow after his law. Um, in verse 10, at the end of verse 10, we see, since the contributions began to be brought into the house of the Lord, we have had enough to eat with plenty left over for the Lord has blessed his people and this great quantity is left over. God, that's just how he works in abundance. This overflowing, when we go after him, it's this overflowing of blessings, this abundance of blessings. Verse 12, they faithfully brought in the contributions and the tithes and the consecrated things. So just the faithfulness, speaking of who is in charge and who is over and who King Hezekiah had appointed for what things. We see that Azariah was the chief officer of the house of God. Um, in verse 15, in the middle of it, we see that to distribute faithfully their portions, we keep seeing this word faithfully, that the people were in this. They were seeing again that God gave them one heart to do this, to hear King Hezekiah, to move forward um, in this. God knowing the blessings that come from that, knowing the freedom that this gives. So just continuing in, everything was done right. Everything was done according to the law of the Lord. Again, we see at the end of verse 18, for they consecrated themselves faithfully and holiness. This is for real. There is a newness. This is a revival that's happening. This is things where people are awakened to his truth and they are seeing, they are seeing the reality. They are seeing the greatness. They are seeing the power of God, that he is over all, the power that he holds, the love and the compassion that he wants to give. And what happens when we return to the Lord? So verse 20, these chapters finish up. This video um, will not finish up because we're jumping to Psalms. But the end of uh, 31 finishes with verses 20 and 21. Thus Hezekiah did throughout all Judah. And he did what was good, right, and true before the Lord his God. Love that. Verse 21, every work which he began in the service of the house of God, in law and in commandment, seeking his God, he did with all his heart and prospered. So, so amazing, so beautiful after so many kings who were half-hearted, who started off well, who whatever it was, so refreshing to see King Hezekiah, to read about him. Seeking as God, he did with all his heart and he prospered. So good. Let's jump over to Psalms 48 and we will finish with this chapter. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. In the city of our God, his holy mountain, beautiful in elevation, the joy of the whole earth is Mount Zion in the far north, the city of the great king. God in her palaces has made himself known as a stronghold. Again, this is just lifting up God. I love beautiful in elevation. The joy of the whole earth 
is Mount Zion in the far north, beautiful in elevation. God is lifted up. God is a great God, a good God. And we think King Hezekiah coming right off of this celebration, celebrating the Passover, bringing all of these feasts back and, and in unity with one heart, just crying out to the Lord in authentic surrender and being all in faithfully praising, faithfully worshiping and going after the Lord. And we see this just continuation of praising God. Let's jump down to verse nine. We have thought on your loving kindness, O God, in the midst of your temple. As is your name, O God, so is your praise to the ends of the earth. Your right hand is full of righteousness. Again, righteousness. Hezekiah bringing up and saying the kings before. Look what they did and look at the result. But my command is let's come. Let's gather. Let's celebrate. Let's celebrate this Passover. Let's consecrate ourselves. Let's consecrate the house of the Lord. Let's do this thing right. Let's praise God. Let's obey him. Let's believe him that he is a righteous God. Let's believe that when we return to him, he blesses, he returns to us, he pours out to us, he pours out compassion and grace and love and power upon us because he is full of righteousness. Your right hand is full of righteousness. This acknowledging, this praising, this lifting him up and declaring how good God is. Let Mount Zion be glad. Let the daughters of Judah rejoice because of your judgments, because of who he is, because of his righteousness, because of the assurance of knowing. Simply, we know what's going to happen if we turn from the Lord. We know what's going to happen when we turn to him, knowing that in that faithfulness. And when his judgments come, when we repent, when we humble ourselves, even after those judgments come, what God is faithful to doing, who he is in his faithfulness and receiving us. And in allowing us just to enter in to his presence, enter into his blessings. What a faithful God he is. Okay, let's finish up with uh, verse 14. For such is God, our God forever and ever, he will guide us until death. This full reliance on the Lord that so many kings before King Hezekiah relied on these other nations. We saw even his father, King Ahaz, relying on the king of Assyrians to come and to deliver him out of the hand of the king of Israel and king of Aram. Just then, but now we see this, this, this declaration of 14, he will guide us until death, that this is the Lord that we're gonna rely on him to guide us. We're gonna rely on him to deliver us. We're gonna rely on him to be our righteous God, to be our blesser and our rewarder when we choose to walk in his righteousness. So good, this lifting up, this choosing to see, this choosing to know him, to discover more of him, to remember the ways that he has worked and who he always was and always will be. So good, I love this lifting up. I love this acknowledging him and piecing all this together. The people get it. It's sinking into their hearts. He is a righteous God. He is faithful and it's up to us. It is up to us if we turn away from him or we turn to him. Though the way our lives end, the way our lives go, it's up to us. Even in the pain, even in the suffering, even in the hard things that come our way, it's up to us if we're gonna trust the Lord and receive blessings even in the midst of pain or if we're gonna turn away and be swept up in the judgment that comes against wickedness. Ah, oh, so good. He's such a faithful God. Love this, love this journey. Love those scriptures. Love our little break from Isaiah, even jumping into the Kings. So, so good. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for walking this out with me. I'm so excited for more. I cannot wait to discover more of his heart. Cannot wait to just hear more from him. Let's keep going after him. Let's keep going at it. Let's keep being purposeful. Let's keep our eyes wide open, watching, watching the miracles that come in this, from this, within this, after this, all of it. Let's just watch God. Let's choose to keep our eyes on him, our righteous God, our faithful God. Mm. May he be glorified through all of this. Thanks so much for walking this out. See you soon on my next video. Cannot wait to continue walking this out with you, connected to him, praising him together. So good. See you soon.